guys, Rob from Georgia here where it is always too freaking hot. Yeah. So anyways, this video, episode one of what I want to I want to start talking about commentaries. Not enough people talk about commentaries on films. Now I love listening to commentaries. I mean, I listen to them all the time as much as I can feasibly listen. I listen, and I don't know. Maybe it's just because I love reading. I love. I just can't stop learning. I want to learn, and especially film is an aspect of that learning. And so commentaries can be an absolute wealth of information about a film that we. Uh, that we love or that we hate or we just sort of indifferent to, but sometimes a commentary can actually change the way we feel about film. Um, it can uh, make us love it even more if it's a good commentary. Um, now the commentary that I want to uh, kind of focus in on on episode one, of course, is probably, well, if you've seen my video in my top five, it is one of my films off that video, The Empire Strikes Back from 1980, directed by Irvin Kirshner, uh, who was, uh, one of George Lucas's film instructors at USC. So it is interesting that for Empire, George leans on one of his film professors who was known for Eyes of Laura Mars, Robocop 2, and Never Say Never Again. Um, unfortunately, we lost him in, uh, back in 2010. So he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, the commentary, of course, can be found on the uh, trilogy set, special edition set that came out in 2004 that comes in a box like this. And unfortunately, I mean, it's a great commentary. Unfortunately, Urban shares time with George Lucas's executive producer, Ben Burt, sound designer, uh, Dennis Murren, visual effects, and of course, Carrie Fisher. I'll just say this right off the bat. Carrie Fisher on this commentary is like listening to Jamie Lee Curtis, who is also on the commentary for, or with Halloween, with uh, John Carpenter. She is so annoying at times uh, just to listen to. But I will say this. I don't think they were all in the same room together. And... And with that being said, I thought they balanced off the commentary, the, uh, the contributing efforts of those involved very well. It never really feels complete. It never feels out of place. It never feels awkward, really. They really did a good job of just injecting the thoughts into, you know, all the areas of the film. And uh, so, you know, I've heard commentaries before where there's more than one person and they can't be there together, so they've got to take their thought. Like uh, Friday the 13th Part 7 just came to my mind. That is an awkward commentary to listen to. It's rough and it's awkward because it just seems misplaced. The comments that just seem to be rammed in here and there and there. But this one's balanced well. This is really, really well. But I mean, I would, I would have loved it if they would have kept it singularly just to Erwin Kirshner. I would love to hear him talk through the entire film from start to finish. Um, amongst the many things he uh, he talks uh, about right from the beginning of the film, you know, shooting up in Norway on an ice glacier, because remember the whole opening segment of the film uh, is uh, on the planet of Hoth, and uh, so the ice planet. And uh, so nothing worked, nothing worked right. So that's kind of uh, cool. But he also talks about uh, just, well, one of the reasons why I love this commentary, you know, if you remember on my video, um, my 22 Shots of Appreciation I, uh, for The Witch, I mentioned how I really wanted more from that commentary other than the technical aspects, and which seemed to be all that was really delivered was the technical aspects of that film. Here, Irving, with the time he has, really does a great job of balancing out the technical aspects of the film and really the, the narrative, um, just the story and his own thoughts about what's happening, what should have been happening, what they were attempting to do, uh, you know, balancing uh, humor against uh, the idea of just being a very serious uh, drama uh, in terms of character development. Um, 
he mentions it is a very, very simple story, but balanced against very complex characters. And I think that's one reason why Empire is such a great film, is they have, the story is simple enough they have time to explore the characters in ways um, that maybe hasn't been done in any other Star Wars film. Um, and he reminds us this is, uh, you know, it's weird to hear, but it is a fairy, uh, a fairy tale. It is the second part of a play, or, or the second, or the second act of a play, the second part of a symphony. And he talks in that language. This, it's art. It's, it's passion. It's stuff that's coming out of him. I mean, he loves, he loved this experience. And you know, and he even said no to this at uh, when he was first asked. To direct this, he he didn't want to because at that point Star Wars had already become this huge phenomenal hit, and he uh, he was scared. How do you follow that up? I mean, how the next film has to be better than the first. I mean, this is his mentality walking in. And you can't do that. Star Wars it was the breakthrough film, but his agent thankfully talked him out of it and said, "No, you've got to do this." And so he did it, and of course, the rest is history. It is one of the great. You know what? You take away all the Star Wars films. And you only give me one film out of the entire franchise, then The Empire Strikes Back is all I need. It is, it is, it stands on its own. It is the only film I think you need. It is, uh, it's a great film. Um, you know, and, and there's a couple things he gets into. Um, what almost happened to uh, Mark Hamill? He almost, he almost died in the back to tank scene. I'm not gonna ruin it for you. Um, you gotta listen to the commentary. And of course, the memorable "I know" scene. He goes into great length and detail on how that, how Hansa uh, responds to Leia, ends up actually. It's funny. I mean, this is how film is made, and so it's really great because he he really balances off well his thoughts, his his, his emotions of, of the work he did, but he does spend quite a bit of time. Like, I mean, you know, the the great scene of um, when Han and Chewie and Leia. And, Lando, uh, when the door slides open and Vader's on the other end of the table and Han reaches for his, <clears throat> his laser and, uh, of course, Vader just, you know, by the force pulls it out of his. Uh, Kirshner says, man, he just threw that thing across the table <laughs> and, you know, worked out a practical way of it just landing in, uh, in Vader's hands, um, which, is, uh, which is also a fun part of the commentary is the practical side of how effects were done, tricks of the camera, um, very simplistic, inexpensive ways of doing effects that quite frankly, I think cinema in general miss. Remember, this movie's 1980, um, and so for what they were able to achieve in 1980, especially following Star Wars, it is amazing what they did in this film. So, Irving Kirshner, um, the commentary for uh, Bert, uh, uh, Bert, Ben Bert, the sound designer, he offers uh, a lot of interesting things in this commentary as well from a sound um, effects point of view, as well as Dennis Moran visual effects. I mean, it is good stuff to listen to. The only one who's really annoying out of the bunch is Carrie Fisher, uh, who really, again, reminds me of um, Jamie Lee Curtis. And if you ever listen to... Uh, the commentary track on Halloween. I so wish they left John alone on that commentary track. Um, or maybe even Donald Pleasance. I don't, you know, something. I don't know. I'm trying to remember when Donald Pleasance passed away. Well, yeah, I mean, he should have been on that Halloween. I just don't, I can't remember when they actually made the commentary track for the DVD release of that. But anyway, it should have been with somebody, anyone else other than Jamie Lee Curtis. But anyways, it's a great commentary. If you've not listened to the commentary for The Empire Strikes Back, um, and you got this edition. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's on a Blu-ray edition as well. Um, you need to listen to it. it it's, if you love the films, if you especially Empire, if you just want a, a, a nice, well-balanced... Um, it's almost storytelling. Irvin Kirshner almost comes across as a storyteller in this commentary. And I think that's what makes it so enjoyable to listen to. And that's why I wish he would have been able to do it by himself and not with the others, especially George. I mean, you know. It's, I have my own personal feelings about George Lucas, but I love this film. This is one of my favorite films. I saw it when I was 10 years old on this big screen, and uh, I just absolutely love this film. This film is great. So if you haven't listened to the commentary, listen to the commentary on this film. And uh, 
I don't know what the next one I'm going to do is. Um, I'll figure it out. But uh, anyways, I hope you liked it. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. And um, if you have your own personal favorite commentaries, tell me what they are. Or if you have an idea of a commentary you want me to listen to, if I have it in my collection, um, you know, just put that at the bottom too. So anyways, uh, I'll leave it at that. It's VHS 82 apostrophe. And as always, sign off with Go Bills. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.